name Victoria McLean and welcome to my channel. Now, as you remember from my last First Trial Thursday vlog, I am going to show you some of the very first items I bought in my collection 18 years ago. 18 years ago. Am I really that old? I'm 39. Oh my God. So, and also, I want to tell you a lovely Guinness World Record update because as I said, that is the kind of girl I am. So for me, this is where the magic starts. <laughs> This very first book, 18 years ago, from, was it Ottica's Bookshop back in Telford? I was pregnant with, with my son, Daniel. It was completely bedridden. I couldn't go anywhere. I had a lot of problems with my pelvis and people who have had children, they fully understand that one. And so I was stuck, but I managed, after hearing about Harry Potter, um, I think it was The Prisoner of Azkaban was coming out or was it Chamber of Secrets? And I heard about it on Blue Peter. I was a bit of a child, so I still watched Blue Peter. I loved it. I loved that show. Didn't like watching the news, but I could watch Blue Peter. They were talking about um, the, the story by JK Rowling. I think she'd come on, I'd seen her do an interview years and years ago, and she was talking about Harry Potter and her book about Harry Potter, and, and they described like how much people had fallen in love with this wizard and, 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 and Harry, obviously, and that it was an incredible story and people were just going completely crazy for it. And I'm not one for following trends. I know, you won't believe it, but I am not one for following trends, okay? If people say, oh my God, you need to do this, you need to do that, I will be like complete deliberate opposite, uh-uh. Uh -uh. I ain't doing that. You can do it, but I'm not doing it. So I don't follow trends at all. However, something struck a chord with me with Harry Potter. Um, the whole kind of orphan thing, um, being teased and bullied in school, wishing he was bigger and better than he actually was, and that wishing somebody would just come and take him away and say that he was meant for bigger things. I was severely bullied throughout my school years, primary and secondary, by pupils and staff. Between you and me, I wanted to sue the school that really put me in, in such a bad place that I didn't want to take it any further. This is just like, you know, between you, you and me now, uh, but I didn't want to take it any further. But they, they would, for example, I mean, I'm severely dyslexic. I have um, ADHD, uh, dyslexia, dyspraxia and SPLD. So I have severe learning difficulties. When I was in primary school, I won't say which one because because my dad wasn't in the army we kind of changed back and forth um so we were in different i went to a lot of different schools um, but in this one school um the headmaster would make me stand in front of um the class when i made a mistake and he made me and he would read it out and he would encourage everyone to laugh at me. Now that might be you thinking that I'm exaggerating that, but a lot of kids in the school now come up to me that were in that school and I, I still kind of know um, they remember that and it was horrific. And I ended up going to secondary school with a reading age of a six year old at the age of 11. I couldn't even write my last name, which was Whiting back then, W-H-I-T-I-N-G. And I, I, couldn't, I couldn't even spell that, it was horrible. So I had a really, really bad time. Plus, if you have read my autobiography um, of the girl, a girl wizard, it's a play on words. It's meant obviously the boy wizard, but I'm the girl wizard. It should be witch, but I like the fact that it says wizard. Um, this is available on Amazon. This isn't a ploy for you to buy it, but I'm just pointing out that if you read this, you will, I'm not going into it now because it's too horrific, but if you read this, I really did have a bit of a crappy childhood. A very, very, very abusive member of my family. Um, gave me a bit of a hard time, and uh, my other siblings, unfortunately, as well. Um, so there is a lot of stuff that isn't in that book that actually happened that both myself and my siblings have decided to leave out. But it was a, a hell of a childhood, a really bad childhood, and uh, I went from having a really crappy time in my childhood in my evenings and weekends to going back to school and having a really bad time in school. Um, so I'm, I was a very, very skinny child. Um, I was very much a loner. I liked to be on my own. Um, I managed to find my own coping strategies and, uh, and get through life as best as I could. And my book, um, A Girl Wizard, uh, available on Amazon. Uh, that, that's a plug. Um, available on Amazon to buy, I think it's $7.99 or you can download it. 
I really struggled. I, I'm, you know, I'm, the book kind of shows you that it doesn't matter where you come from. You know, it doesn't matter what your background, it is where you end up that counts. That is, that is it. It is where you end up that counts. And I just think the reason why I did the autobiography is because I wanted people to see that you can, no matter what problems you're going through, it can get better. Obviously not in every single circumstance. I'm not, I'm not gonna wave, I wish I could wave a magic wand and everything be perfect, um, don't we all? Um, but in my circumstance, and I know that there are so many people that can follow that as well, that if you just, if you really believe in what you want and who you are, then you can achieve anything. And that is what I wanted this book to do. I wanted it to be like a self-help book for people who were going through similar things. My children haven't read it. They don't wanna read it, they don't need to read it. You know, this, it's not like that. My husband hasn't read it. Um, but I have people that have read it and they have come up to me or they have messaged me on social media and said, my God, your book has been an, an, a huge inspiration to me. And I'm so grateful, thank you so much for making me realize that I'm not alone. You know, and that is what I wanted. A Girl Wizard, it took me, I think, four months. It's very quick. The editing is terrible because I pretty much did it all myself uh, with one help from a lady called Charlotte who uh, helped go through it. She also helped me put it on Amazon as well. So I'm very grateful to Charlotte. But my book, I needed therapy afterwards. I, after I wrote it, I needed therapy to kind of, because I'd gone through, I'd written so much stuff that I tried to forget um, that I managed to actually kind of dig down and find all this information that I, I, I buried so deep years before, um, which obviously, of course I'm going to. And then obviously after I wrote the book, I, I did need therapy. Um, and I had, I had six weeks and the lady I saw, uh, the listening helper who is, for anybody who's in this area, the listening helper in South Wales is the best of the best. She is incredible, look her up. I will put the link below to her, I think it's Instagram. Yes, she's beautiful and she's gorgeous, but she, what she did in those six weeks, I don't think a psychologist could do in three years. I really don't think. She really was incredible and an incredible inspiration to me and made me feel, yes, I've written this book. Yes, I'm getting backlash from my, that member's family's side, but you know, I don't care. I'm sorry, it needed to be written. And if it helps this one person, then I did my job. And that is what I'm glad. I think I only get like three pound for every book that's sold. So it's nothing. I don't get much money for the amount of time I spent on it but it's not, that's not the reason. So, yeah. So back to Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I started reading this and I just, I, I mean, I'm, as I'm dyslexic, this was the first book I'd actually read and it took me two weeks. And I've got to say, I just, I didn't want to put it down. I couldn't put it down. In the, in the words of David, David Heyman, I couldn't finish it until I'd read it, until I'd finished reading it at, th at 4.30 in the morning. Okay, it wasn't 4.30 in the morning, David Heyman, for me, but I know where you're coming from. I absolutely know. But uh, this book is a first edition, which is amazing, because these are actually a little bit valuable now, these books, if they're not completely dog-eared like this one is, because I read it and reread it and read it and reread it. Um, but this is the first edition, as you can see down there, you have the one to 10 back to front, and that indicates that it's a first edition. Now, how you can tell it's the first edition is if you see the one there in the front, and then the numbers are in a proper sequence, the one to 10. Now, as you go further up and you keep buying different ones, um, other ones, and they get newer and newer, you start to see the numbers disappear. So you then see two, which would be a second edition, three, which would be a third edition, and so on. And then eventually you would see these numbers jumbled, jumbled up, and you'd have things like 37 and so on. So when I was reading this book, I went through an incredible journey, as you can imagine. I mean, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone for anybody was just the reason why I think we fell in love. We wanted to know what was going on with the world. We wanted to know who Lord Voldemort was. We wanted to know why he killed his parents and so on and so forth. So it was just like, J.K. Rowling was so, so clever to do this. She just left you hanging after each one and left a little bit more each time. And I just absolutely love this book. I paid 5 99 for it. That's crazy, isn't that crazy? But this was the very first Harry Potter item I bought and I absolutely love it to this day. Now I did promise you back in my last Thestral Thursday vlog that I would give you a close up of this beautiful item. Now this was the item I bought and I realized then that I was a true professional, proper, number one, definitely gonna do it, collector of Harry Potter memorabilia and Fantastic Beasts. 
this was the item that I was going to collect and I, I fell in love with this. I bought a book um, called, I think it's Harry Potter Collectibles. I'll put a link down below because it is the gospel of collecting but this was like 10 years old this book. I saw in this Harry Potter collector's book, um, which is amazing, it was produced in America, so there's not much British items in there, to be honest. Um, but this was in there, there was no picture, so I had no idea what it looked like. But the title was in there and the company, which is the San Francisco Music Box Company. And I Googled this, and then the search was on to find this snow globe. Um, it took me, it must have been about five, six months, maybe a bit longer actually to find the snow globe. And it was in America, brand new and boxed. I think I paid 150, maybe 200 pounds for this. But my God, it is beautiful. Let me turn the lights down so you can see it without the glare. And hopefully we can get a good look of what it looks like inside. As you can see, it shows Harry going through platform nine and three quarters. with his trunk and Hedwig and his all, all his parcels on top of his trolley. Now, as you look round the back, I love this little detail. You can just about see there, it shows him going through platform nine and three quarters and a little bit of his, his uh, very, very oversized Dudley um, shirt coming through the bottom of the portal there, of the, the gateway. And it is absolutely incredible as you go round, you can see it in full. I love it, absolutely love it. Now this is one of two. Um, this It was this one, and I can't remember the other one that I remember seeing, but this one is just, this was my favorite. The other one I think had Hogwarts Castle in it, that was it, and it had the train going round, but I think that was maybe a bit later than this one. Now this stunning, stunning piece, as you can see, has the Hogwarts Express at the bottom there and the beautiful Hogwarts Castle. This is gorgeous. Now if you turn the music on, it of course plays the Harry Potter theme tune, Hedwig's theme tune. Now as you go around, I think, I'm not quite sure what that is. It could be, it meant, might, meant, might be Hagrid's hut. It might meant to be Hagrid's hut just there. So I'm not 100% sure what that's meant to be. Because we've got um, part of, I think that might be the boathouse just there. But isn't it gorgeous? Absolutely gorgeous. And of course, this is the Glenfinnan viaduct that the, that the uh, that Hogwarts Express is actually going over. These are probably about 400 to 500 pounds now, this value. So if you've got one, make sure that you look after it. It is stunning. I still have the box for this. Um, it's still in perfect condition. The only thing with this one is there is an air bubble at the top, which sometimes with certain snow globes, it can't be helped. Um, it could be because it's, maybe it's in direct sunlight, um, which again is a big problem. So you need to move it. But uh, I love this absolutely gorgeous so this is the san francisco music box company who produced this and i think it's called platform nine and three quarters or arriving at platform nine and three quarters i'll have to have a look in my book and there you can see at the bottom the hogwarts express is just arriving at hogwarts goes over the glenfin and viaduct and then arrives at hogwarts afterwards but then maybe that's what it is it's going over the glenfin and viaduct and uh and then arriving at hogwarts so it's absolutely beautiful Okay, so the moment you have been waiting for, the update of the Guinness World Records. <gasps> so here is what has happened so far. A while ago now, a few years back, I liked the idea of trying for the Guinness World Records. Now I'd heard of obviously this gentleman in Mexico, Asher, um, had broken the record and I thought I could do the same, but I was wrong. Back then, we're talking a good few years ago, I didn't have nearly enough items to beat him. Um, and it wasn't so much about beating him, it was just about, I guess it was because I liked the idea of having the biggest collection in the world. So for me personally, it is about getting my collection out there. It's about showing people what's available. Um, for example, when I was on uh, this morning, three years ago, a long time ago now, uh, I took some of, I was asked if I could take some of my collection. Now luckily, as obviously this morning is a very, very professional TV programme, they sent a personal courier to come and collect my items, bag it all up, take it all off, unpack it. Once the show is done, 
pack it up again, take it all back to the house. While I was there, and while I was being interviewed, Amanda Holden's even stated, I didn't know half of this stuff existed. And I think Tom Felton said the same thing. So I was on there with Tom Felton. It is lovely to be able to say, yes, these items do exist. They are real. There are companies out there that do them. Sometimes you've got to hunt. There are companies like the Pottery Barn who will not ship to the UK. Rah, rah. Good morning. Um, for those of you, most of you don't know, um, I'm attempting the Guinness World Records for the largest collection of Harry Potter memorabilia. I'm currently putting my cards out. Um, as you can see, I've got stuff everywhere. The back table is completely full. Uh, it's very cold in the room. I'm um, putting my stuff out. You won't see this until after it's all been done. But I wanted to do a quick video anyway. I am shaken. I am sick. Um, this has been four months in the planning. I can now go to sleep tonight. It's done. The count is done. Um, adjudicators have finished. I'm gonna be here for a while this evening, I think just sitting amongst my things. We'll have a, well, we don't know. It could be not enough, it could be enough. We don't know. I'm not gonna say how many they counted. Um, all I can say is I'm exhausted and I just wanna sleep. We've got pub members of the public come in to view everything because obviously it's open to the public. I'm not gonna say, as I said, how much just because I. I don't know yet what's going on. So. I have 86 bags. <laughs> As Janice said, I didn't know they made 86 bags. Clothes was 315. Uh, Row G was all my jewelry and stuff. That was 798. Top. I've just heard back from the Guinness World Records because I was confused number I was given, uh, sorry, the, uh, the each item in my collection couldn't be counted individually because they were in boxes or they came in packs or sets. No. <laughs> so on the plus side, I smashed the record. On the negative side, I have to redo the count all over again. So I now have to negotiate with the rugby club um, and my two adjudicators to come back and, uh, and redo the count again. I'm exhausted. I'm in uni at the moment. Say hi, everybody. <laughs> Today is sorting out everything for the Guinness World Record Day. Urgh, crazy. So crazy, crazy, crazy time in the house at the moment. I'm trying to get everything sorted. Everything's being moved tomorrow, ready for the Guinness World Record uh, uh, attempt um, on Thursday. Um, my stomach is in total utter knots. I feel so sick. It's not good. <laughs> I've done this once before. It was a practice run. I've done this once before. Come on now, Victoria, you can do this. You can do this. This is mine. Plus, thank God for Museum Context UK. You guys are incredible. And I mean that with every fiber of my being. Do you know why? Because it costs money for you to get your results quicker. Now, if I hadn't, if I wasn't gonna pay, um, you have to wait three to four months that's three to four months. That's up to 16 weeks for your result to find out if you are a Guinness World Record holder. Now, I can't wait that long. And I can imagine you guys probably can't either. So the wonderful Museum Context UK, they are amazing. Um, check them out. It's a Harry Potter based shop or series of shops that are basically, when you walk in, it's like walking into Diagon Alley. It is just sensational. You'd think it was just the most amazing Harry Potter shop in the world. It's beautiful and the people are amazing. So they have actually sponsored me to get my um, results back within five days, not four months, not 16 weeks, five days. Oh my God, how amazing is that? Can I do this? Can I really do this? I don't know. Ah! And of course, not forgetting my very emotional, um, very emotionally tired vlog I did at 2. 20 in the morning, the morning of the count when I had just finished setting everything up. <sighs> okay, as you can see, I look very tired. It is 20 past two in the morning. I'm done. <sighs> but my God, it looks amazing. I love it. I'm so pleased with it. It 
looks so good. So let me take you around. I am so tired. Let me take you around. Sorry, I got a big bang in the background. That's, that's my go-to program, that is. Okay, so here you go. Here is my collection. This is almost everything. There are one or two things that aren't here because I was washing my dressing gown. As you know, I love my dressing gown. Um, and I have a few things missing. I need to replace those. Um, I've got a sticker that I have from Lego store that is missing. Can you believe I actually know that there's just a sticker missing? That's how much I know my collection, how much I love my collection. Um, so this is everything so far. God, I'm so tired. I'm looking forward to going home, but I know I'm so wired, I probably won't sleep. I've got loads of DVDs that I haven't brought up, so they've got to come. At the moment, the only one I've got is Half of Prints. So, I love the stage, look at that. Isn't that wicked? And then you've got all the boxed figures here, apart from one or two things that obviously aren't boxed, but I've got nowhere really to put them. And then you can see that there's more underneath here, board games and so on, Lego. But, uh, but yes, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, and it's, I've done everything. I've done absolutely everything. The only thing that Adam did love him, because he, he, I wouldn't have let him touch my stuff anyway, um, is he helped with the, uh, with getting the chairs. I ran out of room for the postcards. <laughs> so I've had to use my chest on a chair. Uh, so these are all the postcards. And then you've got Clock of Frog cards. Then you've got all the base cards for the film cards. And then you have the trading cards and you have all the stickers. I've still got these stickers to do, but it's okay. As you can see, there's clothes here and socks and so on. Um, but look at the stage, doesn't that look awesome? We love it, absolutely love it. And then there's this lot here, so this is like jewelry, hair, makeup, um, pins, badges, uh, necklaces, bracelets, charms, earrings, chokers, and you've got magnets, and you've got like these, even though they say no autographs, these are actually officially from Warner Brothers. They're given out to guests sometimes, and I've got this one and that one, um, which is amazing. And then obviously the official frames then of Warner Brothers here. So I've got top trumps, I've got all this stuff here. There's still a few gaps, but I could put stuff if I need to, but I quite like the fact that it's not too overcrowded here. Um, again, this, I did run out of, as you can see, I did run out of, um, of tables, but uh, I'm exhausted. Um, I've actually got a pair of slippers on that I pinched from my uh, my slipper selection, so I'm gonna have to put them back before I miss them. Got wrapping paper down there, and then here you've got all the posters, and you've got framed pictures, art prints, I mean Lima, metal signs, banners. You've got notebooks that you saw all this earlier, but obviously I've added a few things to it now. Um, hopefully I've done it enough for people to actually be able to count it properly tomorrow and then I've got things underneath the table as well as you can see and then over here you have the clothes and then you've got obviously hats, scarves and so on, you've got the crew stuff, you've got towels and, and costumes and robes and trousers and onesies and jumpers and then it goes to t-shirts, plenty of t-shirts. I haven't counted anything. I'm pretty sure almost everything is here. Almost. So, um, so obviously I've got a few things there. Um, and then here I've got my shoes, my slippers, um, blankets, and then obviously teddies. As you can see teddies and cushions and then obviously my wonderful wonderful Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows part 2 banners so yes a fantastic day doing it I just want to sleep so I'm gonna go I'm gonna sort out that patch there because the stickers that need to go there sort out that patch and I am done so here is what's going on. Right, okay so you know, I've been speaking to Guinness and the BBC all week and the week before as well now, I was told on Thursday that uh, by the BBC that they want to come to my house uh, this Triwizard Tuesday, hence the reason why there is no Triwizard Tuesday vlog this week, and they would like to film my collection, or what you can see anyway, 
um, and obviously talk to me about how to, how I've gone done uh, gone around doing the Guinness World Records and so on. Um, they want me, or they wanted me to know when you guys found out, so everybody would know together. So according to the BBC, on Tuesday. I am having a visit a Tuesday afternoon. Obviously, they are visiting me to do some filming, and a member of Guinness is apparently coming down to give me the results. Uh huh. <laughs> what the hell? I don't even know what to make of that. I don't know. Apparently, she said it is to give me or to not give me the certificate, depending on how the results turn out. Yeah, so to be continued. So come this Wizarding Wednesday, sorry, Wizard Wizarding World Wednesday, I called it, didn't I? You are going to have an update and the full results of how it goes. So I'm a little bit nervous. I will be filming it on Tuesday evening. Um, I will know on Tuesday evening. So if I go quiet, you know why. Um, it's one, because I'm not allowed to tell you. One, because of, uh, two, because I signed a contract to say I'm not allowed to tell you. And three, it could very well be because I didn't get it. So we'll see what happens. So on uh, we this Wizarding World Wednesday, um, at 12 p.m. in the afternoon, I will be releasing my full update on whether I have the Guinness World Record or not for the largest Harry Potter collection. Will the gentleman Asher in Mexico hate me after Wednesday morning? I don't know. Will he challenge me to the title? I don't know. All I can say is that I'm pooping my pants and I will tell you more on Wednesday. Um, so yeah, watch this space to be continued. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure that you subscribe to my channel, invite your friends, and also like this video and let me know down below in the comment section, what did you think of this video? What would you like me to cover? Until then, thank you so much. Take care, I love you all, and I'll speak to you very soon. Bye-bye.